Hello and welcome to In a Pickle once again with your host Karthik Venkatraman and let's start out by saying congratulations to the Golden State Warriors on winning their first NBA title since 1975. Golden State accomplished this feat which a lot better team play than the Cavaliers had this whole entire postseason after especially after Kyrie Irving got hurt to go into the NBA Finals after Game 1. So the Warriors were the better team and the Cavaliers were plagued by turnovers the whole entire game and depth was an issue. The Warriors were just simply better. Let, let me put it into perspective for you real quick. When LeBron wasn't on the floor, here's some of the players combined shooting statistics. Delvadova, Smith, Shumpert, and Jones. Now this is when LeBron James was not on the floor. Shot 0 of 21 throughout the whole entire series for the Cavs. These are the kind of things that just didn't get it done for Cleveland and why they're sent to the offseason after six games. Just a huge part of it, whereas on the Warriors team, you had big guys stepping up like Draymond Green stepped up, David Lee when he was called on, Andre Iguodala, Harrison Barnes. But let me go back to Andre Iguodala real quick. Andre Iguodala was a 1 in 100's odds of winning the NBA Finals MVP. Andre Iguodala won the NBA Finals MVP. Now, obviously, for those of you who'd seen my previous episode on who I thought should win the uh, NBA Finals MVP, I picked LeBron James. I still think he should have won it. The guy basically averaged a triple-double. But nonetheless, here are some better odds of winning the NBA Finals MVP than Andre Iguodala, who had a stellar series. was my second choice, but here's some better odds. There are better odds of you being born as a twin in North America... Uh, there's better odds of being called to come on down on The Price is Right. And uh, there's better odds of on the first play of the Super Bowl to be a safety. So uh, here's looking to you, Denver Broncos, a couple years ago. So um, congratulations to Andre Iguodala, though. He had a stellar series, did a pretty good job on LeBron James in the post. Also provided some huge plays for them, coming off the bench and then eventually finding his way into the starter role. So Iggy, hats off to you. Amazing series. Congratulations on you and your team winning. Now, we head into the offseason. The Cavaliers have a lot of contracts to sort through. I think Thompson and Love will be back to stay. I think Love, he's pretty sold on coming back. Thompson will probably get a max deal of some sort, a uh, shorter deal. So when that bigger salary cap, uh, the max comes out here in a couple years, he'll be ready to even get a bigger contract. I think Shumper will be back as well. LeBron James really wants Shumper back, expects him to be one of the best defenders in the league next year. But it'll be interesting to see what will happen with J.R. Smith, who reportedly plans to opt out of his contract and wants more money. I don't know that the Cavaliers will pay him that money. Uh, he had a pretty good season at times in the regular season, and then he had some big performances in the postseason, such as that one game against the Atlanta Hawks when he put up 28 points. But overall, I don't see the Cavaliers re-signing J.R. Smith. It will be up for discussion. He did have some problems. He had the flagrant fouls. He had some other problems. Almost got ejected for a game. Well, he would have been suspended for a game, one more game, had he got another flagrant foul in the Golden State Series. So things like that. There's some off-the-court issues as well as on-the-court issues. We'll see if J.R. Smith will stick with the team. Another one, Della Vadova who's a fan favorite in Cleveland. He'll be expecting more money probably this upcoming year. He doesn't get paid a lot right now, about $865,000. But it'll be interesting to see whether the Cavs keep Del Vidova or go for a new guy in the NBA draft that's coming up here soon. So we'll see what Cleveland does there. Uh, another thing that we have to talk about, I guess, uh, some rumors floating around of David Blatt not going to be the coach next year. Maybe, possibly nothing set in stone. These are just... Rumors going around, and they've been there throughout the season, especially when the Cavaliers weren't doing well, and while well, the Cavaliers have lost this series. But here's where I think things get interesting. Now, the Cavaliers, they seem to have had problems with David Blatt throughout the season getting on the same page, whether it was play calling. I mean, if you saw the picture last night of David Blatt uh, addressing the locker room and J.R. Smith just looking very distant from the whole entire speech that he was giving... I don't know if players really buy into David Blatt, and then there was a lot of questioning with how he was playing the players in the NBA Finals and a lot of fatigue problems. And then there was also the questioning of Tim Timofey Mozgov. So there's a lot of 
tension as well as the coaching staff having problems with Kyrie Irving's father, Kyrie Irving's agent on whether how much Kyrie should play. So all these things are tensions that David Griffin's going to have to look at and he's going to have to say, well, is it going to work together or do we have to go with what the players want because the players are really important and they can always find another coach. But David Blatt, hats off to you as a first-year coach. You helped your team make it all the way to the NBA Finals under man. So applause to David Blatt as well. But that's all that we've got for this episode. I'll probably be taking uh, the next couple of days off. So we'll hope to catch you soon. This has been In a Pickle with your host, Karthik Venkatraman. Have a wonderful day.